for being a Kenyan, but before that, our viewers are really tweeting fast, and we're already trending on, on Twitter. Thank you for that. We want to see hear what people are saying about the, the topics we've been discussing. Yeah. Mwali Mukahato yeah. is saying, first they take my money by force. He put force in cups. Then subject me to betting, which is patapotea. <laughs> Lastly, they enslave me for decades under a mortgage. Amid Alamika Sana is not happening. <laughs> S at SMN Tomiaka, he says, I don't understand why I should be forced to help someone have a house yet paying my rent is a burden <laughs> <laughs> as Shikoya says maybe the news gang doesn't want a house jamila may want a camel shuri may want a refund kai kai may want a cow jageo may want a lifestyle <laughs> ivonne okwara may want a portion <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> really? <laughs> um, i think it's the suspenders <laughs> If it's a, a suspenders, I already have. You know, <laughs> yeah. Dr. More. Benson Kibore uh -huh. says, this is economic terrorism. Wow. Absolute scam. 70% of civil servants are retiring yeah. and risk losing their contribution refund capped at 15 years. How do you play lotto with people's income? As Dr. Benson Kibore. <laughs> Carrington Mwendwa says, I know I need a house of my own mm. where I'm not paying rent. Who told Jubilee government that they have to remind me about this bitter truth through <laughs> housing fund levy? Wow. People are angry. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Kenyans are angry. And we're not going to talk about the costs of being a Kenyan. Before I start, I'd like us to listen to some traders at Kiambu Market. We spoke to them yesterday. And this is what they had to say about the cost of food. Kama nyanya tulikuwa tunanunua hapo beleni kwa tunanunua kwa saduku ile kubwa inaitwa kalbu. E, hii ilikuwa tulikuwa tunanunua kama elfu samba, elfu nane. Sasa imeenda juu imefika mpaka elfu kumi na ine, elfu kumi na tatu hapo. Kiambia kasi tama nyanya moja ni ten bomo wanaenda, anakuambia hacha ni nwe roiko. Anasama nyanya si lazima akule. Mm. Asa hindi tunauza mia, hii ni wafifi. Hapo njima tunauzaka hii 50 bob. Wakati kuna chakura hii tunauzaka 50 bob. Hii tunauzaka 40 bob. That is the reality on the ground. The cost of those important commodities, nyanya, mboga, uh, viazi, all going up. And the drought is, is one of the causes of what we are seeing. Vua kuna, so farmers are not planting. And the grim st uh, information from the Met Department is that the rains are not coming anytime soon. And that is the ripple effect. People are suffering. You look at statistics that tell you that 85% of Kenyans survive on an income of 40,000 shillings. And they tell you about defaulting of loans mm -hmm. now. People are unable to pay loans that they took. In fact, now when I, when I borrow from Shylocks to be able to pay off bank loans, the ones who are defaulting are also many. A recent survey has shown that 75% of people actually are relying on to a kiosk now to be able to s to afford mm -hmm. maziwa bread. So taking really. credit at yes, the kiosk. Yes, taking credit because wasimapu wakuna interest wakuna nita chukua nita lipa mwishu wa mwezi. Maziwa imeongezeka it's 55 shillings now. Where are we going as a country, Joe? If, 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 uh, a number of things, Jamila. I, I was uh, yesterday the IGAD, um, the regional aid, uh, uh, body that um, deals with all manner of things, had um, a few things to say about the current situation. And, and today I was speaking to some of the scientists about <coughs> what is going on. And one of the explanations they gave, there was this story about our rainfall being stuck in, in, in Tanzania. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. I mean, it sounds bizarre, but that cyclone had a way of when cyclones happen they create some sort of low pressure area so almost sucks all the sort of winds because there's a convergence of winds that happens before there's rainfall it's complicated science but basically what happens is that we missed our window mm -hmm. where rainfall usually comes here so by the time our winds converge so to speak the sun will have moved further north because the rainfall in the equatorial um, region usually depends on the position of the sun so we'll have like a short window like that's why they are saying that if it comes it will come very late in the season of the long rains that will not be enough for for for, for us to have a proper uh, crop season so that is a, a reality a scientific reality but the other thing that they said which is worth saying here is that droughts floods all these extreme weather things will always happen they've been made worse by climate change but they will always happen so the problem is not those things because they are predictable predicted with some reasonable accuracy. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. get it wrong sometimes, but by and large, there's a trend they predict which is true. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, 
There's no bad weather, there is no bad climatic conditions, it is just bad planning. What are you doing with the information that you get? Sure. And that is what these people are saying, that we cannot act as if we are, oh my goodness, yeah. this is a drought, this mm. is a flood. Those things will always happen, yes. they've always happened. What do you do when you know they're going to happen? Even and our yeah. dependence on Vua and everything to Absolutely. be able to actually even plant crops, farmers are now unsure of what to do. There's no water and they can't planning. even plant. As Joe says, uh, the issue of, of uh, high food prices and, and food security, remember I've done an explainer on this and these are the issues. First of all, the reality is this, that even farmers themselves are not food secure. Eh? Over half of the farmers we have in the country are themselves net buyers from the market. Mm -hmm. So you grow maize, but you still go to the market to buy your tomatoes, which are now what, 10 shillings per tomato. Uh, and that urban dwellers largely depend on the market themselves. Listen. Can we go back again to the issues that were supposed to have sorted this out? Galana Kulalu that would have sorted this. Do we have, one, a proper agricultural and transformation strategy in this country? I speak to food security experts on a daily basis. A number of things have happened that would not have brought us here. We withdrew the subsidy of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. The fertilizer itself was of low grade quality. Right now, they're buying something like DAP at about 5,000 shillings. It used to be 4,000 shillings. This Galana was supposed to make sure that we're growing two crops, not dependent on mm -hmm. rain, by the way. Yeah, it was to move us from rain-fed agriculture to irrigation agriculture. And it was supposed to do just much more than maize, because that's what we focus on. It was supposed to have provision for dairy, sugar, and horticulture. It was supposed to make sure that all of these things are sorted out and to allow farmers to then move away from the dependence on maize to start growing crops of higher yield like tomatoes, like avocados. I mean, this is a country in which we still have a deficit. We still talk about that we are importing 75% of our rice, 50% of the sugar that we use, 75% of the wheat that we consume. That, I mean, it, this and obviously what happens with the inflation prices, why do you think we're all clamoring for higher salaries? It is because yep. Kenyans... In fact, the poor spend 70% of their income on food. On food. On food. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not in a good place. If we're talking about food, Kenyans staple food here too, in Mahindi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And four months ago, two kilogram packet of maize flour was at 86 shillings. It is now at 122 shillings. Of course, the minister said, oh, we have enough. We have 21 million bags. We'll be able to last till July. But then there's this issue that's coming up that farmers are hoarding their maize. They're waiting for prices to go up, and they're able to sell them at 3,000, 3,600 shillings for a 90 kg bag. The, problem, <coughs> the problem is, eh, as a country, we may never be able to forgive ourselves because mm. sometime last year we were talking about floods. A lot of water went to waste. Yep. We were busy evacuating people from these waters. Yet, if we had planned well, by then we would have built dams, we would have channeled that water <coughs> there. Dams. By now, yes, dams. Okay. Just by now, <laughs> we would be talking about a different matter altogether. Mm -hmm. But be it as it may, this is a question of planning. Yeah. Sometime back, we saw maize farmers with queues on mm. end I in Eldoret CBP, yeah. and in Kitale and in Nandi, elsewhere. They could not get to sell their maize. There was this claim that some maize was coming from Uganda and so on and so forth. I think it's also a question of how we manage what we have, even as we anticipate tough times. And the situation is not going to get any better. It is going to get worse as we move on. In fact, some of the farmers that we spoke to some time back, they were telling us there was a problem with the seed yeah. that they were going to plant. Yeah. The subsidized fertilizer that they were supposed to get did not get mm. here. So even if the rains were here already, we would, not we be, would ready. be talking about a crisis coming. Yeah. So this has now multiplied by far. Mm. So ev even as the government tells us it has enough stock to last us until July, but I'm, I'm, not even July. I'm, I'm not even interested in what is happening between now and July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in what after. will happen post-July. Linus, I don't know, are we going to start seeing uh, yellow maize again from Mexico or some country you're going to need to import because you don't have enough food and now cost of fuel has gone up. Of course, it affects the cost of production and all this leads to, to the high cost of living that we are seeing. When you mention yellow maize, my mm. mind goes back to what that yellow maize actually meant. Yellow maize used to be a political weapon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hunger is used, can be politicized, yeah. and it used to work perfectly. In Ukambani, they used to call it molio, where now politicians turn up and look like 
for the Christmas come mm. early, yeah. carry a bag of yellow maize yeah. and, 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 and give it to people. But I think the current generation <coughs> of leaders, government, ministers or cabinet secretaries as we call them, need to realize that they do not have that benefit that the past regimes enjoyed. Because you are leading a more informed uh, kind of uh, population. They know very well when you are messing things up. When you turn up, and, and it, I felt really sad for the farmers the other day, when a government um, uh, official said they are holding maize. Holding maize. Just the other day, Francis, you've mentioned, they could not sell their maize to the National uh, Cereals Board because the cereals board is full of maize that has been imported by cartels. Mm -hmm. That is what has been done. The farmer has been aged out. I've mm -hmm. never forgotten, not too long ago, I think it was last year, tomatoes rotting in farms. Yeah. And, and, the glut, yes. and the milk, and the milk, glut, milk, they they were milk, yeah. milk yeah. Now, uh, one uh, piece of tomato is, is 10 shillings. Ten shillings. They were rotting in Yandara just the other day yeah. and, and, and uh, sections of of, of Lakeipia. I yeah. think we all agree, policy-wise, mm. the farmer has been failed. Yeah. Now, looking at the uh, land that is under agricultural um, uh, farming in this country, this country can actually feed itself Absolutely. and export some of the, of, of the food. What needs to stop is what happened in Galana Kulalu, mm. which, is, yeah. but, but uh, which is pure uh, theft. Yeah, and, 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 and Jamila, going forward, because the, the, the pre predictions that are there, and this is actually globally, that this sort of thing is going to be more and more frequent, yeah. mm -hmm. that drought following flood and flood coming after drought mm. and drought getting longer and longer. And there are smart things that people are beginning to do about these things. It's not rocket science. There's mm -hmm. smart agriculture, for example, that they talk about, that if you know that your long rain season usually is three months or four months, whatever, and now you know it's only going to be one month, then you think about which are those crops that, that can, can, within yes. that one month, have right. done so well that even if the rains disappear, you will Storage. still have some food at the end of the day. Are there places where you grow totally different crops that have never been grown before? Are there areas where you stop growing some crops and do something different? So it is those kinds of decisions that are based on information that is available mm -hmm. right now. But do, that do, we, Joe, do we have the structures in government that are actually attending to that? Do we actually have, have, thought, do we actually, have an actually, agricultural before, and actually there are many security strategy? The thing is this, there are many smart people in government. These are not strange things. They yeah. know about these things. And it is more about, we like, you see, when, when for example, Kaikai Kai Kai was talking about cartels and whatever, there is something in this country where nothing happens for nothing. That there's a way in which, before you start building something, you have thought about, okay, who's going to benefit, whatever, <laughs> before you do some <laughs> project that's <laughs> going to help people. So it is caught up in all these things that yeah. happen in government that are not necessarily geared towards the benefit of the people, but the ideas are there, the people who are mm. smart enough to do them are okay, there, yeah. and they know what needs to be done. Yeah. It just never gets done unless someone Yvonne, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm reminded of uh, a very f popular and famous quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is enough for all of us. True. But there is, is not, not enough, enough for all our greed. It's enough yeah. for everyone's need. Yes, for everyone's for need, greed. but not enough for everyone's greed. So what we are doing currently, we are suffering the consequences of a few greedy people who have taken what was for our need, mm -hmm. the majority. Mm -hmm. So every time guys talk about corruption, and some people dismiss it as, oh, okay, what's do what, 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 then it, it should translate to some of these things that we are seeing. When we say the government is spending a certain number of billions to build dams, Watch another history, a role na Kimorel. There are the dams that have seven dams. seven hundred billion shillings? There are the dams that have already been paid for a substantial True. amount of money. Yeah. Yet there is nothing to show for it. Yeah. One seven point five billion, another five billion, another another six billion. And Actually, there are sixty dams. Huh? Absolutely. Fifty-seven. There are some dams that were even no? that mm. were even mm. mooted mm. and began construction during the Kibaki days. Yes. You're talking about Badasa. You're talking about Kimususu. You're talking about Uma. Mm. And we are not even yet there. Yet a lot of money went into it. So the moment we start thinking about some of these things seriously, then we will see the sense in it. And in any case, we are a country of total contradictions. Mm. On one hand, we are talking about plenty and wastage. But on the other hand, we're talking about lack 
and desperation. Talking about luck and desperation and plenty and all that, we are still not uh, over that scandal of maize last year. We were f- I think 5 billion shillings was allocated to buy maize and we spent 11 billion shillings kuna maize scandal pia ambayo ilikuwa na chunguzwa. And that's gosh. the problem in this country. People worry about the fact that where can I yeah. pata ka shilingi ama bili ama tatu that I'm not working for, that I'm not I'm getting illegal. Lina, you need to finish one more point before yeah. we, we are done. Before there's just one more yeah. thing that um, I note that we have not done this time. Mm. Traditionally, when these things happen, it's so dry. Um, we have not seen rains uh, for a while. We are told to go to Uhuru Park to pray. Oh, Maombi Amvua. Maombi Amvua. This time it hasn't happened. So mm. as a reaction, uh, it doesn't look like it's part of the game plan this time. We have Tanzania to blame, and Joe explained uh, in good detail why our rains were <laughs> taken by, uh, ta- by, by Tanzania. Uh, otherwise, we would normally, around now, be starting to trip to Uru Park to pray. Omar Rudni says, the cost of living in Kenya is too high nowadays. I'm just living like a slave and a refugee in my own country. Wow. The only thing Najivunia is scandal of billions and politicians only think about 2022. Okay, okay, Kenya. Jim, Jim, you have to read this G- one. Jim, Jim, Jim YYC <laughs> says, News Gang, please remove those coins behind Jamila. Those ones. Jubilee government oh. is planning to get 1.5 <laughs> percent from it. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about 1.5 percent oh and the politics gosh. around it. There's also Ooh. a bit of politics in it. Um, <sighs> let me start where it, it was today. Mm. Um, Deputy President William Ruto goes to Nyeri today and uh, uncharacteristically the provincial administration is nowhere in sight. And you cannot tell us that because it was a church function, that's the reason why they were not there. Some Sundays back the deputy, the deputy president came to a church that I go to uh, in Banana. And I saw the deputy county commissioner there. I saw the OCPD there. I saw the OCS there. I saw chiefs in their uniform. So what is happening, Linus? I think there are very many ways power is expressed. One is the presence of a police officer, mm-hmm. bodyguard. That is what politicians go for. That is the price of winning elections and joining government. You want to feel power, and power is represented by the crown. You know, the crown that that AP officer wears, the crown that that um, uh, county commander wears. It shows you that you are in control, in charge. And what has traditionally happened when it comes to dirty tricks that um, political groupings in a government would, would, would apply? One of them is what we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. Pull out the bodyguards take away the, the, the official cars. That is what uh, would normally happen. And I think what we've seen in Nyeri today is a culmination of what we saw earlier in the week when the Tanga Tanga allied members of parliament, all of them lost their uh, bodyguards. Joe, I want to read to you a tweet by majority leader in the Senate, Kipchumba Murkomen. This was a tweet on the 16th of this month that Kenya today is the story of massacre of the innocents captured in the gospel as per Matthew chapter 2, where Herod the king of Judea ordered the ex- execution of boys below two years in Bethlehem and its environs in an attempt to eliminate the Messiah. Why didn't he just go for Jesus himself? Well, I read is, is there a reason, is there a reason that tweet was read to well, Joe? Well, <laughs> I, I think the question is, who is Jesus? I choose, I, choose to, I choose to ignore Yvonne's question, <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 uh, one would imagine that maybe he was just in an Easter mood and he felt like quoting the Bible, but I think it's, it's, it's a little bit deeper than that because um, he and a few other people who support the deputy president have been saying that the, all this movement that we are seeing, the motions, let me call them that, what we've been seeing around corruption and all this, is ultimately targeting the, 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 the deputy president, that uh, we are going for all these smaller people, but uh, the person that is really mm-hmm. the target of all of this is the deputy president. The deputy president has alluded to it in, in, in several ways, that this thing seems to target him. So one one uh, cannot help but imagine that Murkomen is saying, well, why don't you go for the, the boss himself? Why go are you directly. going around in, in, in circles? But he would have to speak for himself. But that is, I think, an interpretation that many right-thinking Kenyans would be forgiven to assign to that statement. If you tie these two issues together, since the, the last weekend, mm. uh, about five 
MPs and a governor allied to the deputy president had mm -hmm. their security withdrawn. Yeah. Charles Owino, the police spokesman, tried to explain why, right. the rationale and everything else. But five days later, none of those guys have received their security back. And then now what we saw today, is, it, is this a subtle statement that Aish... Hey, who is in charge? Uh, but then also, if uh, Charles Owino's statement is to be believed, um, so why these five? Wouldn't it be across the board? Um, and, and this is a script we have seen all too often. Remember when the same thing happened with the then NASA leaders, mm -hmm. when their security was withdrawn? At the time, it was, we are reorganizing our police personnel services. I mean, and also, you know, those instances of Nusumkeka and things like that, you know, people going to certain places and not finding it. It's such a familiar script that we see uh, with the police. And it only happens to certain individuals, but they say this is widespread. But nobody else is reporting their security having been withdrawn. So, so is Jamila, speaking about... Uh, uh, Speaking about what the same thing yes. she says, yes. Uh -huh. um, I'd like us to listen to a soundbite by the president. Mm -hmm. He spoke yesterday at the closure of, 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 a, of a summit on infrastructure, and uh, we'll continue from there. Uhuru, Uhuru soundbite. When you read the newspapers and you listen to people in funerals and in weddings talking, do you know from the first time we met, we have never here we have never mentioned the word ODM. We have never talked about the jubilee. We have talked about Kenya. We have talked about Africa. <laughs> but if you read the papers, oh, no, no, this is new political machinations. I don't know uh, who is planning. He has never told me he wants to be president in 2022. I have not told him that I want to continue to be president in 2022. <laughs> we have just been talking about the issues that affect our people. Eh? Like in Ibadu, huko watu, ho, ho. Raila anavunja jubilee. Where do we talk about jubilee? We will talk about uko. Uo uhuru anaingilia mambo ya ODM. Me, I have no clue even who ODM is. I don't know. Me, I have never. That's a different setup. Uhuru amesema, oh. Lina, is the president being candid here? Is he honest in this? I think he is being candid showing where he stands on this issue first of the handshake on, and the 2022 debate. And I think we've said it before in this uh, set that he is increasingly extremely irritated with what he must consider a distraction to his legacy. Because you have a deputy and you have a team of politicians within your political party that is taking attention away from the, from the main dance, which is the second term of Uhuru Kenyatta, he is worried that um, a lot of attention is going into campaigning for 2022 than delivering for the period uh, between now and then. And the irritation is, is, is clear to, to, to show. Number two, I think he looks like uh, he is being sincere on the kind of conversations they've had with uh, Raila Odinga. They're saying we haven't, we haven't discussed 2022. Lina, yeah. Lina uh, let, me, let me pose this as, as we go to Joe. What is it that the deputy president is doing now differently than he was doing between 2013 and 2017? Because he was still talking about the re-election from 2013 to 2017. If the president then was concerned about a legacy and doing some work, why wasn't there concern there about Be the politicking and yeah. the development? Between 2013 and 2017, his boss was on the ballot. He's on the top of the ticket. Right now, it's clear he's finishing his term. Constitutionally, he can't run again. Yep. So he's saying, I'm the next uh, man, and give me an assurance now. That's what his supporters are saying, that we said 10-10. Your 10 is uh, three years to go. So assure me the next 10 is mine. I think that's what he's doing. Jamila. Yeah, yeah thank you, Geshuri. One thing I'll just say in like 20 seconds. The president has been very consistent in his support for the handshake and Raila Odinga throughout since last year. Every time he speaks to Giangum Kubwa, he defends him. He's now talking about how they work together, that the politics of the parties do not come in at all. Siju ODM, Siju Nini. And he's been consistent with this narrative throughout that Nasmama Nae, Niko Nae, even at the expense of, of even uh, correcting his own uh, deputy even in public. Because of course he doesn't name him other than 
than the Namibia mm-hmm. uh, incident, which was also a whole hula baloo that even caused the president to uh, have his accounts uh, shut down. In fact, someone is asking Jay Twitter, Yaraisi yeah, Merudishwa, is he seeing what people are saying? Is he reading the hashtags? Does he know the anger that the people have? But I just wanted to say that the consistency within which the president has really stood by this handshake is something that I think that's important. Yeah, yeah and, and, uh, and I'm building on that. I think that it has to be noted that the president seems to value the handshake so much so that he seems willing to even risk the unity of his party because mm-hmm. that is what's happening now the deputy president has some sway in the party he has support a support base and the president knows that but here he is saying that i know what you guys are saying but the truth is i do not care when it comes to the handshake this is so important that it almost doesn't matter what else people in the party are saying and that should really be instructive that the president risks is willing to risk the unity of his party at least for now for the sake of uh, what he's doing with with Raila Odinga Yvonne siasa ni kujipanga that's what we keep hearing every day w- wouldn't you then argue that DP and Ajipanga he doesn't want to sit and be told we well, relax I'll sort you there what if it doesn't happen so the argument that he can walk and chew gum <laughs> well um <laughs> political gum <laughs> yes <laughs> to be specific just to be, sure. <laughs> just to be sure that that's what we're talking about i mean i suppose so but you know at a tangent really um and like you said 2013 to 2017 what was it about it was about re-election now it's election for one and legacy for another the interests I mean, I converge then, then right and now, now they're divergent totally different. yeah, yeah. Okay. So you need to yeah. wind up i think you are starting our last word today